with this video, we begin the study of rigid body planar kinetics. We will start with mass moment of inertia. But since I introduced mass moment of inertia and explained how to calculate area moment of inertia in the course of statics, in this video, I will not go into details to explain mass moment of inertia. Please review statics if necessary. As I mentioned in statics, in my opinion, the best way to understand mass moment of inertia is by comparing the rotational motion to the translational motion. Mass provides resistance to translational motion. Similarly, mass moment of inertia provides resistance to rotational motion. For a given rigid body, we can calculate its mass moment of inertia about any arbitrary axis as I m a a equals to the integration of r squared dm, dm being the mass of a differential element, and r being the perpendicular distance from this differential element to the axis. Since in this course, when we mention moment of inertia, normally we would only refer to the mass moment of inertia. Therefore, from now on, in this course, I'm going to drop the subscript m. Unlike mass, which is absolute, mass moment of inertia is like moment, which is always relative and is different when calculated about different axes. Once the mass moment of inertia of a rigid body about a specified axis is determined, we can calculate its radius of gyration, again with respect to the same axis, kAA equals to the square root of the mass moment of inertia about this AA axis divided by m, the mass of this rigid body. Radius of gyration has the unit of length. But normally, this relation is used reversely. Normally, we are given the radius of gyration of the rigid body with respect to our axis, and we can use that to quickly calculate its mass moment of inertia about the same axis. Similar to area moment of inertia, the parallel axis theorem also applies to mass moment of inertia, which means that if there is an axis that passes through the mass center point G of this axis, don't forget there can be unlimited number of axes that pass through the mass center of this rigid body. But for this particular one, let's say if we know that the mass moment of inertia about this axis is Ig A prime A prime, then if we want to calculate the mass moment of inertia of this rigid body about another axis AA, which is parallel to the axis A prime A prime, then we can use this equation, with D here being the perpendicular distance between these two parallel axes. Let's look at this example. For a uniform thin disk of mass M, we need to determine its mass moment of inertia about the z-axis, which passes through its center of gravity g. Normally, center of gravity is the same as mass center, and this axis z is also perpendicular to the disk. Let's first pick our volume differential element to be a ring located at radius r with a width of dr and its mass dm is determined by rho the density times its volume dv and its volume equals to its area dA times the thickness of the disk T and the area of the ring equals to its circumference times the width dr which is 2 pi r times dr and the mass moment of inertia of this disk with respect to a z-axis passing through the center is determined by this equation, the integration of r squared dm. Therefore, substitute in dm, integrate from the center, which is when the radius r equals to 0, to the edge of this disk, which is when radius r equals to the capital R. We get this expression, but notice that for this entire disk, its volume equals to its area, which is pi r squared, times its thickness, t, and its mass equal to 
the density rho times this volume, which equals to rho pi r squared t. And we substitute this into our mass moment of inertia expression. Therefore, we can get the mass moment of inertia equals to 1 half m, the mass of this disk, times r squared, r being the radius of this disk. This is a very useful conclusion that can be used directly later on. Let's look at this a similar example for the same disk. Now we need to calculate the mass moment of inertia of this disk with respect to a z prime axis that is again perpendicular to the disk and passes through a point on the edge of this disk. Since as we noticed, the z prime axis is parallel to the z axis and we already determined that the mass moment of inertia of this disk about the z axis is 1 half m r squared. Therefore, we can determine the mass moment of inertia about the z prime axis using the parallel axis theorem. And the perpendicular distance between these two axes is the radius of this disk r. Therefore, i z prime equals to 1 half m r squared as we determined earlier plus m r squared which equals to 3 over 2 m r squared. For this example, we have a uniform slender rod with mass m and a total length of l. We need to determine its mass moment of inertia about the x-axis, again, passing through the center of gravity, point G, and another x prime axis that passes through point P at one end of this rod and also parallel to the x-axis. Let's work on the first part, finding the mass moment of inertia about the x-axis. We pick our differential element, which is the disk element, at location y with thickness of dy. Notice that this differential element has the same cross-sectional area as this rod. For this differential element, its mass equals to, again, the density times dv, its volume, and its volume equals to cross-sectional area A times the thickness dy. And to determine the mass moment of inertia about the x-axis, we apply this equation directly. In this case, R is y, and we substitute dm and integrate from y equals to negative half L to y equals to positive half an L, and we get this. Notice that for this entire slender rod, its volume equals to its cross-sectional area A times its length L, and its mass equals to the density times the volume. We substitute this into the expression we get for Ix. Then we can determine that Ix equals to 1 twelfth times m, the mass of this rod, L squared, L being the total length of this rod. Again, this is a very useful conclusion. For the second part of this problem, again, since we determined Ix already, and these two axes, x and x prime, are parallel to each other with perpendicular distance of half an L, therefore, again, we can apply the parallel axis theorem to determine Ix prime to be one third ml squared. Let's look at this example. We have a composite rigid body, a pendulum that is made of a uniform slender rod and a uniform disc. And we need to determine the mass moment of inertia of this pendulum about x-axis that passes through the center of gravity of this composite rigid body, as well as the radius of gyration about this axis. So, the first thing to do is to determine the location of the mass center or the gravitational center point G of this composite body. Let's first choose this horizontal line to be our reference line where y equals to zero. And then we can easily determine the mass center for the component bodies, G1 for the rod and G2 for the disk. And from the reference line, we can determine the locations of these two mass centers, y tilde 1 to be 0.5 meter, 
and y tutor 2 to be 1.35 meter. And we learned this equation from the course of statics again. Therefore, we can easily determine y bar to be 0.84 meter measured from the reference line. This is the location of the mass center of this composite body. To determine the mass moment of inertia of this composite body about the x-axis, we're going to find first the mass moment of inertia of the component body with respect to the same x-axis and then just add them together. To do that, we're going to use the parallel axis theorem and we will need to first determine the mass moment of inertia of each component body about an axis that passes through their own center of gravity. So for the rod, that will be x1 axis, and for the disk, that will be x2 axis. So the mass moment of inertia of a rod about the x1 axis is given by this equation that we derived earlier, and then we can calculate that mass moment of inertia to be 1 kilogram meter squared. And for the disk, to calculate its mass moment of inertia about x2 axis that passes through its own center of gravity. Again, we derived this earlier, and this mass moment of inertia is 0 0.49 kilogram meter squared. Then we're going to calculate the respective mass moment of inertia of each component with respect to the x axis using the parallel axis theorem, and then add the two parts together. d1 is the perpendicular distance between the x1 axis and the x axis. d2 is the perpendicular distance between the x2 axis and the x axis. So after we substitute in all the numbers into this equation, we can get the total mass moment of inertia of this pendulum with respect to an x-axis that is perpendicular to the front of this pendulum and passes through its mass center point G. And also we can calculate the radius of gyration about the same axis using this equation and this completes this problem.